And as for Fred McGriff, he had to go through the entire writer's ballot and go to a veterans committee. That made no sense to us for the past decade. So once again, while we're here, basking in Fred McGriff's glory, let's give Fred McGriff some Cooperstown justice. Fred McGriff was a big star while he was playing. I mention that all the time because people have short memories. McGriff was top six in this league in OPS plus seven straight years. He was an elite power hitter. Take a look at this. From 1987, where he broke in until his last full season, 2002, Fred McGriff was the most productive hitter in baseball. Among clean players, of course. Here are the top three in runs created. The top two are heavily associated with performance enhancing drugs. And you need to think about that for a second. The perception should be that Fred McGriff was the most dominant hitter in his era. The best during his 16 year run. But you don't because he played clean, others did not, including the top two. This obviously cost him the home run chase as well. McGriff finished with 493 home runs. As late as 1999, again, think about this, there were only 15 members of the 500 home run club. It was special. It was about the most prestigious club in sports. The steroid guys blew that out. And in the five years between McGriff finishing with 493, there were 10 new members of that club. I'm gonna say that again. In over 100 years of baseball, there were 15 guys over 500. From 1999 to 2009, 10 more would join the club. 15 guys in over 100 years, 10 guys in 11 years. McGriff retired after 2004, hit the writer's ballot following 2009. By the time the five-year wait was over, 500 home runs had become rather common, and he fell short. The steroid-fueled numbers just blew out all context, and context is important in looking at the history of the game and studying the statistics. And yet, I've long maintained the writers, especially the writers that lived through that era, should have been able to figure this out. Fred McGriff's a Hall of Famer. I have a lot of ways of looking at it. Let's take a look at this in particular. McGriff was a superior performer in the playoffs. Overall, he slugged 532 in the postseason. Compare his slash line in the postseason to David Ortiz. I think Big Poppy's postseason heroics are a little bit better and better remembered. McGriff, though, is right there with him. And check out his numbers series by series for the Braves over his first three postseasons with Atlanta. In 1993, he had that monstrous stretch to outdo Bonds and the Giants in the regular season. And then he tore it up against the Phillies. A 5-19 on base, slugged nearly 700. In 1995, he slugged 667, 688, and 609. He had a 526 on base in the NLCS against the Reds. That was Atlanta's first World Series title. McGriff got them there. And in 1996, he slugged 778. 536, and if you watch the show, you might remember Mad Dog telling me he didn't remember McGriff did anything against the Yankees in 96. He had a fourth 23 on base, he slugged 600. We tend not to count a postseason record in the Hall of Fame analysis. It not only matters, it matters more. We've been touting Fred McGriff's qualifications for about a decade now. Cooperstown justice has finally been served.